Oh, okay. So, yeah. So I want to say hi, like an official hi to everyone um, and hello to all our participants and listeners all over the world. I'm very glad to see that you all joined us today for a webinar on care fudges. And I'm very glad. Um, so I, I hope you know me by now because this is already the fifth edition of this webinar. Uh, but just in case it's the first time. So my name is Nele and I'm from Germany and I'm the vet from Eric Comfort. And today, uh, very glad that we're able to talk about um, calf hutches from agriplastics uh, because this is like calves are just generally one of my favorite topics to talk about. And um, yeah, have, keeping calves in hutches is just a great way of keeping them. And fun fact, agriplastics was the reason I joined this uh, company uh, originally because I worked as a boost supporter basically on the UNTA in 2014. I think it was yep. 2014, right? Yeah, that's where we met right? the first time. Yeah. So, Robert, um, hello to you. Uh, I'm very glad that you joined us for this webinar today. Uh, you're in Poland, right? Yes, yes. I'm in Poland, as I said before. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I am from Poland. I work uh, in, in in central, central and eastern Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I work in agriculture for almost ten years already, and for over six uh, with agroplastics. Uh, I'm sure through these years we did like I don't know thousand or more projects already with with the hutches and. Uh, I'm sure we have over 99% of, of satisfied <laughs> farmers, uh, which believe, which I believe is the, the, the best recommendation. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited about, about this webinar because uh, 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 I will have a chance to, to present some of my favorite projects we did. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, why the, the hutches um, are so, so good for calves comfort and for, for, and why they do, people work easier so yeah that's that's that, that's 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 a short presentation of myself <laughs> and when you say uh, central eastern europe um how many countries do you deal with like which countries are those oh uh honestly i didn't count but it starts from baltics so estonia lithuania latvia through poland uh, slovakia czech republic romania down to <laughs> even greece uh, i okay. have the customers from cyprus so uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there, there's and, a lot of places uh, for, for travel and almost all of these countries have their own language right Yes, yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I of course don't speak all of those languages. <laughs> uh, English is something uh, else. <laughs> universal enough, I would say, for uh, okay. for those people to. to yeah. Okay. Well, I think we just um, uh, go into yes. the. <clears throat> we just start the presentation now because that's what people are here for. <laughs> okay, so as people know <laughs> that signed up and um, yeah, it's that news. So our topic today is going to uh, be why uh, do calves thrive in hutches? So basically, why does it work so well to keep a calf in a hutch? Um, even though a lot of people still believe that um, rearing a calf in a barn would be better. Um, and we kind of like point out what's great about hutches here today. So first of all, I want to start with a little um, poll to like see where we are with our listeners. Uh, I would like to ask you um, uh, what kind of like housing, like if you have a farm, what kind of housing do you use at your farm or um, what kind of um, concept are using most of your um, of your uh, customers or clients that you work with? And I'm just gonna open up this uh, question. I would all like you to just like choose one. Or what's the most that you see in your region um, for pre-weaned calves? So calves that are still um, drinking milk.
Oh, yeah, it's quite quite interesting. I thought this was a more uh, this was, would have a different direction. Um, I thought there would be a bigger focus on the barns because uh, I have to say here in Germany, it's still um, very usual to like put your calves in barns. So they are often like maybe in a hutch for the first 14 days and then they usually go into a barn. That's, I would say, the standard system I see here in Germany. And it's kind of starting to turn, but um, yeah, not, not so quick. Okay, so a lot of individual hutches and then it's kind of even between the other solutions, but two thirds are individual. So that's interesting to know. Um, good thing is today yep. we also talk a lot about um, uh, the benefits of groups because uh, we see that the group hutch is um, for very good reason very popular on the market and um, so the combination of hutch and group will be mentioned throughout the webinar a couple times. Okay, so let's dive into the topic. So what is generally, what's, what is it that a calf needs? It's not only a hutch, that's not enough. Uh, a calf needs a lot of things to like build this or like you know, perform as, as its genetic, genetical um, uh, potential could be. And um, it, uh, there are a lot of factors. So there's the mom, there's like what you feed the calf, there's what kind of like pathogens you have on the bar on the farm. And it's obviously the people that are taking care of the of the calves. Are they like having a good eye for the calves or are they um, are they working on a, on a tight, uh, tight uh, time schedule um, that makes a big, big difference. And the money here stands for maybe like the treatments and uh, the kind of care you um, you're you're willing to invest into your money uh, into your calves, and um, obviously the environment of the facility you keep the calves that are a factor, but they're one part of the the whole as here pictured the hexagon that the calf needs. But today, because this is a too big too wide of a topic, today we're going to focus on this um, environment facility kind of sector. So um, I'm going to move this here a little bit. Yeah, so it's not news and it's not something that we or agroplastics wrote down or made the rules of. This is actually known in the scientific community. Um, there was a paper published already in 1998. I think that summarized that real well, what a calf needs in a housing. So it needs a housing, um, a place to stay in that's dry, draft free and properly ventilated at the same time. And it needs um, easy access to feed and water, and needs a dry absorbing and insulating bedding, and an easy access for handling and treatment, and the place needs to be easy to clean and sanitize. So nowhere in this paper it says the car needs a warm barn, which is <laughs> something that a lot of farmers tell me when I come with, like, baby calves need a warm space. They don't. They need it dry and draft free, and they need all of the other points, but they don't need a warm like cradle. It's, it is a baby, but a baby calf, not a human baby. There is a difference. So um, when we come to the ventilation point, uh, I, I would like to um, Robert to talk about this a little bit. Maybe you can explain us um, how the hutches uh, uh, accumulate this this goal sure sure uh, of course so with a um, hutch with a when, when we use a hutch with a fence there's of course uh, no issue with the uh, with the ventilation because the, the calf will just, will just you know step outside of the hutch uh, and they it will have unlimited amounts of, of fresh air uh, while using the hutches without the fence, it's, it's very important to choose the product uh, made of material that blocks the sun uh, and create the shade. And at the same time, it's, uh, they it should have uh, a lot of ventilation openings on, yeah. on different heights. Like this uh, one has... To clean out or air the hutch. Yeah, yeah, so the bottom, the bottom vents, the top vents. Yeah. So it, it, it's important to, to make sure that all uh, it, it's, it will be easy to remove the, you know, the, the, the air which is, not, which is not fresh 
from every part of the of the hutch mm -hmm. uh, and thanks to all those things like uh, like i said uh, the the good quality plastics and uh, the ventilation yeah. uh, we are able to have very stable temperature inside the hutch uh, which results i would say much healthier lungs mm -hmm. um, the studies from the studies from 2012 made by research group from Polish University uh, shows that calves in hutches have less pneumonia, which is, uh, I'm sure, one of the one of the biggest problem for for farmers who keep yeah. the their calves inside a barn. So yeah, that's that's that that's the that's the why the ventilation is also <laughs> important. As you can see in the back. There is a hand with five points that uh, <laughs> like confirm the, the five points you said. Sorry? Can you hear me? All good. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, all good. Everything's all right. Yeah, everything's right. So, yeah, even... even in No, uh, oh, okay. Ah. Robert's connection seems to be yeah, a little... I'm back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like your connection's a little loose, but uh, we, we'll manage. It's all right. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, but exactly yeah, what you I said. Like, even if the calf is like... Yeah, even if the calf's like inside the hutch, it has the openings like here, the back window and the side window where it can just push it, like put its head out. So even if it's in a setup where it's just in the hutch without a fence, it is able to just like, uh, yeah, look outside the window, so to say, and breathe like an unlimited amount of fresh air. And um, I just put in this picture too to show that it's, it, people are always like, oh, baby calves are too cold in the hutch. Well, there are pretty simple solutions to that. One is like good enough bedding and one is a jacket. And I would never limit the fresh air to a calf for warmth and coziness because you also limit the um, fresh air. And with that, you, yeah, they breathe more and more bad air, polluted air and hurt their lungs. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Yeah, okay. So the next point was that it needs to, um, that the space the calf lives in needs to be easy to act for the calf to access food and water. So obviously it's very important for the calf um, to have food and water and direct parameters. And the, um, the hutches that we uh, sell from Agriplastics always come with two pails for each calf. And um, so the individual hutches. And there are a lot of solutions like where to mount them. So. Uh, it is, you need to feed every calf by its own, on its own if it's an um, uh, individual hutch, but um, it doesn't need to be hard. So we, um, our setups are that you can, that you can have the, the buckets either in front of the hutch or inside of the hutch or on the fence or on the side that you can reach the side door so it's easy and versatile for every farmer and still give that access to food and water to every calf. And um, it actually showed in the same study that Luke, uh, Robert mentioned before um, that calves also consume more solid feeds when they were in hutches versus in a barn. And that just shows that they had like an overall better fitness and health. Like food intake is a very general parameter that shows that the overall well-being happiness of the calf was better. And just put in a couple more pictures to show um, what solutions we're thriving for with the hutches. So it's very important that it's not just a hutch and then the farmer needs to figure out all the rest around it. It's also, um, for example, here we, um, this is a model we sell very regularly in Germany and um, the Netherlands, uh, where we mount this automatic drinker directly onto the group hutch. It's very nice, farmers love it. They just plug in the water, um, a water hose at the back and the calves can drink uh, as much as they want. And especially in a country like Germany, Netherlands, where it freezes like maybe a couple weeks a year, maybe two, three weeks. I always say it's 11 months of the year where you don't have to worry about it. 
I understand that that's different in countries like <laughs> Canada, but still the summer months where the cows really need that extra water are covered. And the next point was that the calf needs a dry and absorbing and insulating bedding. And obviously the hutch doesn't come with that. That's up to the farmer to, to add that. But um, the question is, how can you add it? Because if it's easy to do, you do it. If it's somehow hard, you do it like the first three times, maybe like properly, and then you like stop um, maybe going those extra efforts. It needs to be easy. It needs to be um, sustainable. So uh, every worker likes doing it. So in our hutches, they're designed in a way that uh, here you can see they have a big open door and uh, it's it's easy to bed them from the front, but also they have this door in the back that you can open where you can bed from the back. And that's very important because the open door has its function also as a ventilation opening, but it also does let in some rain, even if you orient it from the rainy side away from the weather side. Um, but it's so deep that in the back of the hutch it stays dry where the calf actually lays and that's where you um, where you can put the straw through the rear bedding door and the same goes for for the hutches um, for the single hutches also they also have a rear bed, bedding door and the other thing you need to consider is for example if you have a group hutch you may need to change the bedding altogether um, while the calves while you still want to have the calves in it it's not enough to to clean it out at the end of the period so for that, you need to have an easy system and the group hutch with the sliding pens that we have, you can just lift everything in one piece with a, with a, with a loader or um, a forklift. And you can even like keep the calves inside because you just push the gate to the front, of, like you basically push the gate and the calves into the hutch, lock it onto the hutch and um, then you lift it by only like a couple centimeters and um, drive it away to the side and the calves can like walk with it and then you clean clean the straw pack put the cow the hutch back where it was and uh, put in new straw yeah so as long as it's easy you actually do it so that's the model behind the system <clears throat> And then the next point was that uh, it needs to be easy to access for handling and treatment. And admittedly, that is a little bit tricky if you're a very tall uh, farmer and not a tiny calf to go into a calf hutch. And um, it, that is um, yeah, a little bit threatening almost to some farmers. They're like, oh, I'm not climbing into the calf hutch to like give them vaccines or if they're sick or something. So we try to make our accessories as good as possible and make the hutches work in a way um, for the farmer too. So for example, the group hutch again, I just chose this picture to show you the back of the calves and then the to give you a feeling for the height of the door. It's very easy to go in and even I, I mean, I'm not the tallest person in the world, but I can stand up completely straight in the calf hutch, no problem in the middle of it. And then, for example, in the flex hutch, you can you can fold back the roof to get better access to the calf, and it's quite easy to to go in. But you still can fold it back forward to give the calf that extra protection. So you have both options. And then with a single hutch like that, for this is the SL hutch, like an individual hutch. We made the fence in a way that you can use the door to kind of lock the calf, like between the fence and the between this fence and the door, for example, for shots or other treatments, taking the temperature, something like that. So I don't really feel like it's an excuse to say, oh, I don't, I'm too tall to get into a hutch to uh, treat a calf. You just need to choose the right system for you and your farm. And um, it is not necessarily um, no hutch, <laughs> so to say, if you want to get around this. So, and the next point is um, that they need to be easy to clean and sanitize. Robert, what's, what are your experiences with that? Well, uh, what, can I, what can I say? So, uh, just, you can, you, start, you can the, start the movie. Yeah, yeah exactly. Start, start the movie, they will see themselves <laughs> and how, 
how easy is it? So, yeah, but yeah, it's it's really really easy. Important for, uh, that the that the hatches are made of such a durable plastic, which makes them really 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 like easy to handle. Uh, you, you don't you're not afraid that it will break when it will like fall down from the from the trailer or or, or something like that. But there's no issue with with such things. You can uh, honestly you can do whatever you you want with the hatch. It, it will not break. So uh, it, it's it's like it's it feel you feel comfortable and you can do whatever you can whatever you you you, you want to do. Uh, of course, there are no sharp edges and the plastic is very smooth, or the surfaces yeah. surfaces are smooth. So it's way easier to, to to clean it and you don't need and you can use just like on the move you can use a uh, uh, tools to to do so it's 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 very 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 good this solution i mean the smooth the smooth surface no no uh, like sharp edges very you know because yeah. it will take more time and yeah the red bull plastic the movie shows more than, than the words. It's, it's really, really, you know, it's Yeah, and also um, um, a lot of farmers like ask me about the durability. And I mean, that's not necessarily something that the calves itself like need for their health, but the farmer definitely needs it. They don't want to make an investment in buying the hutches and then getting new hutches a couple years later. And also with the cleaning, like sometimes they still use them, even though they have a crack especially if they're like made from fiberglass or something like that, they crack really easy. And yes. um, especially if you like handle them with equipment like this and lift them, they don't really like that. And if, if they cracked or something like that, th those are the places where the pathogens hide, like where you really can't clean it anymore. It's always dirty. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So then... Exactly. So if, if you if you start you know finding the places when you can't which you can uh, you know clean well enough good enough it's it's uh, it's becoming a problem bigger and bigger problem with with every with every cult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, th those were like the points um, that I wanted to talk about how the um, hutches like fulfill the needs of the calf and we already like mentioned a little bit that um, a couple points were investigated in um, the performance of the calves in hutches versus uh, indoor and there was another um, uh, parameter research and it was the daily weight gain and I mean we're all interested in that and I just want to like see what the what our participants think the result was in in this um, study so uh <laughs> so i'm just gonna give you the poll here and it's um so it's like which uh which of these results did you think the researchers found when they compared um the same farm the same age group of calves same feeding everything same only difference was one group was housed in a in hutches and one group was housed in an indoor facility Oh, <laughs> so are they close? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I would say our listeners are split about this. There's not like a unified answer here. Hmm. Uh -huh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I think this slow down and I just gonna show the results. Um, so 45% uh, so almost half of the people voted for um, the 210 grams per day and I mean if you think that we aim for about a kilo a day that is quite a significant difference 210 grams that's almost that's over 20% but the reality actually was that it even that it was even more that um, they found that the calves and the hutches gained almost a kilo, and uh, the control group only gained uh, 721 grams per day. So um, yeah, the difference was actually 252 grams a day, and I mean over the period of the, the hutch period alone, that's a very significant difference in growth. 
um, it shortens your weaning time, it shortens your, um, or it, it leads to a younger first calving age, which reduces your heifer rearing costs. Um, it just, the extra work that you need to put into, into a calf hutch, or maybe the jacket that you need to put on to feed the calves in winter instead of going into a calf, warm calf barn, this number is reason enough to put your calves into hutches, in my opinion. It's gonna pay off. Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about um, what you said in the beginning. You said you had some examples that you brought and I have one example too that I wanna talk about um, just to show what this could look like on an actual farm. Uh, yeah, 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 as I said, I, I, I'm really excited about that. Uh, as uh, so one of my favorite farm is a farm from Poland. Uh, you can see the picture right now. And you will see the second picture with group hutches right after this one. So when I met them, I don't know, it was like four years ago already. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a huge problem with too much ammonia in the barn where they were keeping calves, of course, uh, and uh, they, they very often had a had pneumonia and the mortality rate was, uh, was, 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 a high, was high, I would say. So after all the discussions, they, like, I convinced them to, to try five single hutches and the group hutch, just to you know, go with a nice system with the single hutch in the beginning and then put all of, all of them into the group of five. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is the, which in my opinion is like the very very good like four five six calves in in, in two or three months of age it's uh, the perfect group and uh, yeah so after a few months when they like get used to this to this system and uh, they realize how big the difference is between the calves which are the same age and they were keeping inside the, the, yeah the difference between the the, the calves in, from the barn and from the hutches they said, okay, we need more because yeah, we really, really, really like the, the idea. So they, they took another 20 single and, and, and four group hutches. And, and from that point, they were able to reduce mortality rates to less than 2%. And uh, they reduced the veter veterinary costs. Maybe you don't, you will not like it, but. Uh, <laughs> that's but, all right. Uh, but I'm that, all, that, for, that, all yeah. for prevention. I think veterinarians shouldn't be paid to um and and they shouldn't aim for sicker animals so they have more to do um it, it should be on the aim of both parties the farmer and the veterinarian to um to work together hand in hand on preventive measurements and the farmer still pays the veterinarian for the knowledge and the help and all of that to build to create those preventive measurements and yeah. vaccine protocols and all of that and it shouldn't be that you're only like the fire brigade that comes in when a calf's about to die. Um, this should be, yeah. I think agriculture should have evolved from that by now. <laughs> and yeah. Really yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. As, as you can see on the, on the, on the photo oh, yeah. before, uh, it is, you can come back. Yeah, this is yeah. this is the solution of uh, of our distributor from Poland. The, I mean the, the 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 roof over the fence. Uh, uh, it was like created by themselves because in our weather conditions, maybe not the last two or three years, which were very dry, but uh, in general we have quite a lot of rain and and and, uh, and snow during the year, so the roof is is really helpful then. So yeah. This, it, it, it helps, it helps in, in the system in, in general, for sure. Okay, and you detach the fence and the roof from the hutch to clean the hutch? Yeah, it, it's, yeah, uh, it's easy to handle anyways, you know, it, it's not uh, as heavy as it looked, so uh, you just split, as I said, you just split the hutch and the, and the fence to clean it, or you can even slide it in if there, if it's uh, on, on a concrete or something like that. Oh, it, it's, okay. it's really it, yeah. it goes over the hutch. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you don't use the lift kit, then it can it can go over the hutch. Okay, I see. 
Okay, cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So um, another example from Europe, from the Netherlands. Um, this is a farmer um, who also um, originally had a calf barn and then he approached us on a, a trade show and um, wanted to do something about the calf situation because he said he had too many like mostly like lung disease, pneumonias in the calves and maybe a ventilation system for the barn to, um, so it, it's in the Netherlands, so it's a very um, a moist climate. And uh, he said that he had problems getting the moisture uh, from the air and this was like coming out of the a straw pack out of the barn and um, it was hurting the, the calf's lungs. You could would walk into the barn, it was stuffy. And um, instead of a ventilation system, because the barn had other issues too, uh, we um, advised him to try hutches and he tried it and he was convinced right away. And now he has this cute little calf village with those four group hutches and he built this high roof on top of the alleyway and he made this special concrete slab with the drainage to the front and you can see here um, there's the, like this drainage groove and it's really neat because uh, with the, he also uses the milk bar feeders and um, a kind of like a shuttle for the milk and um, it's very neat to clean so he has like hoses here to to like just clean out the the milk feeders after feeding and then you can hang them upside down like this to dry and the feed that is in the feeding trough here that always stays dry and it's very neat and this is a rollback fence that we use in Germany and the Netherlands a lot and you can just like push it in that's the same that I talked about with the cleaning so you can push it in and like hook it onto the hutch and then you can just like scrape the front yard so to say every day it's really not a big task anymore with the setup. I really like that. And the farmer is super happy about the how well his calves are performing right now. And basically he said that he's a little upset that he didn't do this earlier now that he sees how easy and nice it could be to have the calves um, and how much fun it can be. He wishes he would have transitioned to a new system like this sooner. Yeah, and then we have something similar from Canada, right? No, oh, wait. <laughs> so, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. <laughs> I yeah, that's it's second of I would say or one of my favorite as well. <laughs> uh, because we did something similar in Poland uh, too, but uh, you know everything in Canada and and in US is bigger uh so so it looks it just looks better so these pictures are, are, are really great uh so the solution is for me uh a great great compromise between uh, cal calf comfort and uh, the comfort for the people who work there because uh, there's a roof for uh, uh between the hutches uh, of yeah. course it's not, it's, it's not necessary for uh, for calves because they no. have their so they can they can use it every time i don't know if, if it's raining if it's snowing uh because there's a lot of snow and this was this was the reason uh, in canada why they uh why they decided yeah. to use the the, the, roof, the roof over over the, over the fences so yes. yeah so there's still a lot a lot of fresh air uh, i would say unlimited uh, as as it was before and uh, and there's no problem with uh, with the rain and, and snow for the people. There's no problem with the, the snow and the rain for uh, I don't know uh, for for feet to do, for, to get wet and and so in general uh, the solution is really nice and uh, there is enough sun as well in the same time and mm -hmm. what what is good. The, the cost of the building yeah. like, like, like this one is like, like probably maybe you will say more about that but for sure more much much less than much the, less. Build, uh, the cow bar yeah I mean I cannot really uh, speak for I'm, um, yeah, I'm sorry I'm, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah, that's I cannot good. really I'm speak sure for Canada. Uh, and... <laughs> I cannot really speak for Canada and like building costs, um, but I can speak for here, <laughs> Europe. And I just had a um, 
a customer that decided to build uh, a calf village without a roof yet, but he did pour a concrete slab, especially for the calves, and he bought 20 group hutches with a rolling fence and everything for 100 calves in total. And he told me that he also got a quote from a calf, from a barn building company, and that the end price that he ended up paying for the concrete slab plus the hutches plus all the fences and accessories was about 20 to 25 percent of what his quote was for the for the barn without equipment basically and um his comment was there's even so much saving like the difference is so big that if i end up wanna like wanna build a, a roof like this to um keep the the rain out of the feed and the feeding troughs and my work is dry i still have that money like and I still save if I if I end up doing that. For now, he doesn't have a roof and he quite likes it, but maybe he's thinking maybe in the next couple of years he may want to do that. So I thought it was pretty impressive when he told me that. <clears throat> yeah, so to get to the to the end of this, I see that we already spent half an hour <laughs> talking about the gap just here. So generally you can say the studies and our findings with our customers show that calves do really well uh, in well-designed calf hutches. So with well-designed, I mean um, that they need to be from truly opaque material that doesn't let through the sunlight so they don't heat up. They need to be from a durable um, material that doesn't crack and is easy to clean and has um, an abundance of ventilation openings. And then if the hutches are designed in the right way, you can use them very flexible, as we showed with the different setups uh, from our example farms. You can use them under roof, you can use them without a roof, you can um, use them with a fence or just with like a door in the front. Um, it's very flexible and it's not like poured in, um, <laughs> literally not poured in concrete. You can lift them up and move them around on your farm. You can even sell them if it really doesn't work or if you decide to do something else than farming, which we don't hope, but that it, it is not as bound capital as a barn would be. And you don't need a building permit for it. <laughs> there are a lot of like positive things about it. And they are very, very cost effective. As I just described in the previous example, it's cheaper in the upfront investment. And then with the benefits, the health benefits uh, for your calves, you save a lot of money in the heifer rearing, which is one of the biggest um, money spenders on a farm. And uh, if they're design designed in a clever way with, for example, the rear door or the lift kit and stuff like that, you save a few minutes every day, which accumulate very, very fast to a lot of, a lot of time work, paid time that your work is, um, yeah, <laughs> want to be paid for, or you should, you should accredit yourself some payment for that if, if you're self-employed. So um, it, it is just, in my opinion, the superior system. <clears throat> so thanks. <laughs> that was what we had to say for now. I'm going to allow Robert to speak again. And let's Let's take a look at the questions. So we're gonna take a look at the questions that uh, are in the questionnaire um, already, but feel free if something wasn't mentioned um, till now to um, still type it in. Otherwise, um, you got our contact through the registration. And, um, we will follow up with some emails afterwards too. Um, feel free to just pop an email if something comes into your head tomorrow or something. I'm very happy to help. I know Robert is too. And we have yeah. people in the world to um, help you in your specific market, find a dealer or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So any, qu any questions, of course, uh, we, will, we, we will answer yeah. uh, in, in the moment uh, exactly. after, after the, uh, the meeting as well. But uh, for okay, sure. So we have a question about what's your favorite housing? Access to outside using a fence or contained in hutch? How has the housing regulations changed in Europe? So, um, uh, so my personal favorite is if they do have a fence, uh, because I think it's better for the calves if they have both options to go out and in. Um, you need to um, think about that it may 
mean a lot of labor if it's uh, if you're living in a rather wet climate, like for example the Netherlands, um, because when the calf like goes in and out just with their feet, they drag in a lot of moisture from the front yard, so to say, into the hut and stuff like that. So um, it might be work-wise beneficial to keep them in the hut and it's still okay because they can put up the head and everything but if i could like just go after my personal preference i would go for the fence um regulations in europe so yeah we have the general european law on animal welfare um which gives out um mostly size restrictions for like how much space a calf needs at which age but then they're also special in every country. Um, and, and that needs to be looked at for each country individual. Um, for this question in particular, there's no rule that says the calf needs to be in a barn or in a hutch uh, or like something like that. Um, not to my knowledge, at least. That would be absolutely news to me. <clears throat> Um, so here's a question about cleaners for hutches. So uh, I don't really want to say anything about that. Um, generally, my standard advice is um, in Germany, there is a vet approved list of cleaners um, from, um, yeah, from the German Vet Society that I like to go to when I consult with farmers in Germany. That might be highly different in different countries and I don't really want to go out and make any recommendations. Generally speaking, I haven't seen a chemical cleaner yet that um, hurts the plastic. But yeah, I never say never probably. <clears throat> I'm, very, I'm very open to send out this um, general recommendation list from the German Vet Society. I'm sure a lot of the products, because they're from the major chemical producers worldwide, I'm sure they're on the market in different countries too. Would it be practical to use the flex pen system in a coverall building? Um, I actually seen this before in Italy. Uh, uh, they had the flex. Oh, sorry, it's a flex pen. I thought it was a flex hutch. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's what the flex pen is for. It is. It is made to be used in a in a completely closed environment. The only thing that you always need to consider is how do I manage the airflow in this building? Um, the flex pen is very open at the front and the back. That's good, but you still need to ventilate your barn somehow. It's not going to do it by himself. And it's if you don't put the flex pen right to the side of the building, which is an open side and the calf can basically like put his head out of the side of the building, which I'm guessing the cover all building means it so that's not possible. You need to think about uh, forced air ventilation. That's all I'm going to say to this. But generally, yes, absolutely. Flex pens, great. Where does the green pail come from? That is a question for Robert. Which one? Yeah, it's a feeding company from. from <laughs> Poland. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just to not make any commercials. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 just with a very powerful. Fortunately, your your connection seems to be a little loose. I'm just gonna put you on mute here again. Sorry, Robert. And um, yeah, at this point, I would like to um, rem um, to mention uh, our, our next upcoming webinar in this series. It's uh, going to be in exactly two months' time on the last Wednesday in July um, at the same time, basically, at this one. So depending on your region, for um, Central American, uh, Central Standard Time, it's 10 a.m. Germany, Poland, it's uh, 5 p.m. Ireland, 4 p.m. and so on. We're going to send you reminder emails on that, too but I'm gonna post the link to register for this in the chat right now, so everybody can see that. And, um, and if you want, feel free to already register for that so you secure your 
um, you, you secure one of the limited free seats. <clears throat> so, and then I see we got some more questions. Okay, we got uh, two questions about two calves in uh, the hutches, the buddy system. Uh, what about two calves and one hutch? Um, and are your hutches in line with the buddy system standard? So, um, generally speaking, yes, we have hutches that are in standard with a buddy system. But it, if you want to do that, you need to choose the hutch that's big enough. So, you either choose the group hutch or the EXL um, deluxe single hutch, which has 3.5 square meters inside, which is big enough for two calves. You should not choose a single hutch like the smaller one, the base saver or the SL hutch, and just put two calves in it. That's not, that is not what they are planned for. That's not the standard they're uh, meeting, and it's not a good idea. But the EXL and the group hutch are perfect for grouping two calves in the body system. And it's very, I can only recommend this. And actually, our first webinar was uh, focused on that. And I can only encourage everybody um, who wants to be informed about this to watch this webinar too. It's going to be on the same YouTube channel as this video on our AgriComfort YouTube channel. <clears throat> yeah, and I think then there's one last question. Okay, so a dealer would like a solution for 10 calves together. Would we mix two group hutches with face-to-face um, -face central fence? Um, yeah, so I get this question quite regularly to put um, calves in bigger groups than um, what the group hutch could support. And yes, I've seen it on farms that um, farmers built like a bigger enclosure and had like multiple group hutches for the calves to go to. I would say it works okay. Um, it could be a good system for people that um, would still like to use an automatic feeder, which I'm not the hugest fan of, but that's okay. I would, I would say in a group, that's fine because then the cows will actually do sort themselves into the different hutches. Um, for example, with two calves, if you put like two single hutches and in, in one fence, so to say, what you usually see is that both calves want to lay in the same hutch. I think that effect is not as prominent with um, 10 calves and two group hutches, but from a health standpoint and everything, I would still prefer to have the smaller group with four to five calves instead of 10 and have them all in their individual hutch with an individual fence. I think that is better for the animal and in the end it's also easier to clean because then you have the solution where you can like lock the calves into the hutch as it is and don't need to find a new space for the calves to go for cleaning and such. That's my more my personal opinion than anything else. <clears throat> And then, uh, do you have any product that can protect the feet from getting wet when there's no roof over the fence? Yes, we do. Um, uh, we, well, the, we have the concentrate feeder box, which is completely closed. And then we also have like covers for over the feed trough um, that work quite okay. Um, but yeah, there is, in heavy rain there is going to be some some loss with food um but yeah maybe robert has something that he would like to say to this too in my opinion my experience it's quite okay if you use the hay feeder which is covered and the grain feeder which is covered and only give them a little bit of tmr in the feeding trough so uh, can you hear me now yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, of course, we have the weather covers for uh, for all the buckets that are outside. This is one of the accessories. So, I'm sure uh, there is so huge range of, of, of accessories and products in in in, uh, in 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 our catalog that we can meet all expectations. So, we can use our hutches in every farm. And uh, maybe back to, your, to the previous uh, question about 10 calves. So my opinion is exactly the same. Uh, so the, there is a solution for to, to, to like make the, to put the two uh, group hutches together and it works fine, of course. But the, as I said b before, uh, in our, uh, we did some research, researchers as well and 
the perfect group is like between four to six calves. Uh, of course, when they are like, I don't know, two, two three months of age, uh, they just like yeah, socialize faster in such, yeah. I would say, smaller group than, uh, than like 10, so on. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's not a good idea to generalize with stuff like this. Um, for example, I know a farm that does seasonal calving and they have a lot of calves being born in a very short time and they do groups of 10, but most of the groups are actually like born on the same day. And I think that makes a huge difference already to uh, like, let's say a regular sized farm with um, continuous calving, where a group of 10 already has like quite a huge variety in age in it. So as usual in agriculture, there are a lot of solutions for a lot of different problems because every farm is a little individual. But yeah, generally I would advise um, trying to keep the calf, uh, this calf group size around four to six. That's a good group size in my eyes too. Okay, perfect. Um, I want to thank everybody, everyone for, <laughs> for participating in that. I see we still have 29 listeners, which is great. Thanks for sticking with us here. And um, I'm going to send you the link of this recording tomorrow in an email. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or Robert or just the general team at AgriComfort email address that you got all the registry links from and it's going to go to the right place don't worry about it and um yeah looking forward to see you again in july and till then goodbye <laughs> yeah th thank you thank you for your time and uh we hope to see you again on, on, in in july as, as nella said on the next webinar and yeah, we'll keep in touch for sure. <laughs>